Now that a new era for the Scooby-Doo franchise had been established with Spike Brandt and Tony Cervone at the helm, things proceeded onward. Scooby-Doo Camp Scare was released on September 14, 2010, seven months after Abracadabra Do. Brandt and Cervone served as producers while the film was directed by Ethan Spaulding and written by Jed Ilanoff and Scott Thomas. This film features a couple of firsts for these movies. On the technical side, this was the first Scooby-Doo movie made for widescreen TV, and franchise-wise, this film features not one, not two, but three different monsters menacing the gang. The film opens with a group of unsuspecting campers being menaced by a point of view shot. The campers in question are attending Camp Little Moose, run by head counselor Bert, voiced by Stephen Root, who is regaling them with a good old-fashioned campfire story. They never found the body, but legend has it, Significant head trauma drove him insane. They call him the Woodsman. <laughs> After scaring the bejesus out of the campers, we see that the Woodsman is another counselor, Daryl, played by Phil Lamar. The campers are set off to bed, and Daryl puts out the fire. Well, we all know what happens when someone's out in the woods in the dark in these movies, don't we? runs back to the camp screaming that the woodsman is real. This is soon followed by the boathouse exploding, where Bert finds a message waiting for him. <laughs> After the opening credits, and admittedly a pretty sweet opening song to go with them, we find Scooby and Shaggy camping and enjoying the fact that there's no monsters around. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry guys, I was just checking out this mosquito-proof suit. Velma's the monster. Seen it. Moving on. As it turns out, the gang are actually shopping in an outdoor store, picking up supplies before they start their summer as counselors at Fred's old summer camp, which is, of course, Camp Little Moose. Did I ever tell you about the time me and Davy Reynolds tried canoeing up Schmidt's Creek without a paddle? Five bucks says Frank Welker flubbed this line at least once in the booth and risked it being rated R. After making their purchases, Velma notices the store has a small roadside museum attached to it. Even a few ghost stories. You wanna hear one? Okay, I'm required by internet law to do it. Roll the clip! It's got a death curse! Thank you. And surprisingly, no, we don't hear any of the local legends. Instead, the gang head off to Camp Little Moose, which is surprisingly modern. That's Camp Big Moose. That's Camp Little Moose. <laughs> The gang arrive in the camp, only to find the place practically deserted. As long as it isn't haunted. <laughs> Turn back! This place is haunted! Thank you, boys. You saved me the trouble of doing it myself. Daryl warns the gang to get out of camp before running off to Camp Big Moose. The gang get out to look around. This is not a Camp Little Moose welcome. The gang hear a conversation and find Bert reporting on what happened to Ranger Knudsen, voiced by D. Bradley Baker. The Ranger suggests canceling the next session of camp, and Bert says he already has. This does not make Fred happy, and he protests, making himself known to Bert. High in the mountains, deep in the spruce, on the shore of the lake, it's Camp Little Moose! Little Moose! Little Moose! Little Moose! <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that this counter is going to get a lot higher by the time we're done with this movie? Oh, and uh, just for the record, this happens. I've heard of camp rivalries, but this is a little extreme. You hit the nail on the head, beautiful. Oh, I didn't say anything. Well, I wasn't talking to you. However, despite Bert having put out the word that the camp has been canceled, three campers show up unexpectedly. Luke, voiced by Scott Menville, Trudy, voiced by Tara Strong, and Deacon, voiced by Mark Hamill. Bert tries to send them back home, but Fred jumps in, insisting that camp can go on. But before Bert can do anything, the bus takes off, committing them all to providing camp for three campers. So what's Fred's first thing on the agenda? Zip line. Which is pretty much the way we learn what these kids are like. It's okay, Deacon. 
You're still on the ground. See? Ground. Solid ground. What's a zip line? I'm just trying to get cell phone reception. Yeah! <laughs> and so camp gets underway with Fred teaching valuable wilderness skills. And with a little practice, you too can learn to master this skill. Check it out! All right, Luke! Yay! Good work! <laughs> Wait a minute. If Shaggy and Scooby are in the kitchen and everybody else was watching Luke, who the hell were you talking to, Fred? Speaking of Shaggy and Scooby, since the camp stove is wood burning, Scooby heads off into the woods looking for more firewood, and Fred gives a lesson in tracking. These are moose tracks. What? That moose looks awfully familiar. As Fred herds everybody back to camp, Scooby continues collecting wood and finds an actual moose. And an unpleasant surprise. <laughs> Scooby rushes back to the kitchen where Shaggy misunderstands what's going on. Later, the gang and the campers settle down for dinner, but outside, the woodsman watches. The next day, Fred gets everyone up at way too goddamn early in the morning for fun on the lake. Okay, gang, here's the plan. An hour of canoeing, two hours of fishing, followed by a half hour of swimming! In there? Luke suggests going up to Big Moose Lake, but Fred nixes the idea, since Fred, as we've now established, is sucking down nostalgia juice like there's no tomorrow. Nostalgia juice, making your childhood not suck. Fred claims Big Moose Lake is haunted, which is where we first hear of the second monster of this movie. There was a camper named Neil Fisher. In fact, he spent so much time in the water, he grew gills and fins. He became the Fisher. That is the origin of Gil from Kim Possible. Okay, admittedly minus the toxic lake, but look at it! Daphne, however, is not having any of this nonsense at way too goddamn early in the morning, and pretty much asserts that they're going to Big Moose Lake instead, which, as we see, which, as we see, seems to have been created by damming off most of the water from the valley that Little Moose is in. This leads us into a montage of the gang having fun on the lake and... God, you got it some the time! Say... <clears throat> Sorry, moving on. A little later, Velma has a chance to bond with Trudy. I get the feeling you're not too crazy about being at camp. This is not my idea of a good time, but my parents thought a little fresh air would do me some good. They say I spend too much time inside in front of the computer. I'm not exactly the outdoorsy type myself, but just give it a chance. Who knows, maybe you'll have fun. However, the fun on the lake is interrupted when some water skiers from Camp Big Moose come zooming by. I can't stand those snobs from Camp Big Moose with their fancy speedboats and air-conditioned cabins and, and hot counselors. Oh. Is it me or is this era of Scooby-Doo getting kind of horny? Anyway, as the sun starts to set, Scooby decides to do some swimming. While chasing a catfish, he spots what looks to be a church spire underwater and encounters the fish man. <laughs> The fish man tries to get at Velma and Trudy, but some excellent angling by Fred and Luke manage to save them. However, the monster manages to sink both boats in the process. Shaggy, Scooby, and Daphne pick up the rest of the gang and make for shore. Unfortunately, they run aground on the dam, and the fishman helps them over the edge. Thanks to cartoon physics, the gang slide down the dam, across the lake, and all the way into the dining hall where the previously missing Deacon is having ice cream. Hey guys, how's the canoe? Bert and the gang report on what happened to Ranger Knutson. Uh, how about someone is using these monsters to try and scare us away? Why don't you just stick to being pretty? Did he just say what I think he said? Yeah. He thinks you're pretty! I hadn't intended this to be a running gag, but this definitely warrants it. The ranger suggests that everyone go home, and Shaggy, Scooby, and Deacon are more than willing to do so, but Fred insists on sticking around to get some answers. That night, they capture who they think is the woodsman, but turns out to be the hot counselor from Big Moose. I'm Jessica. Jessica is voiced by Lauren Tom. She reports that some camping gear has gone missing at Camp Big Moose, and she thought the gang might have been pulling a prank. Little moosers don't pull pranks. We leave that to those snobs at Camp Big Moose? Uh, no offense. However, things are interrupted when the woodsman shows up. He chases Scooby and Shaggy onto the roof of one of the cabins. The boys wind up falling off the roof and into the bushes, but as soon as they emerge, the woodsman has vanished. Or, more accurately, he decides to chase after Fred, Velma, and Jessica until he himself is interrupted. Oh, that thought, Woodsy! <laughs> But while the rest of the gang is saved, Jessica is still being pursued by the woodsman. The gang give chase, hoping to help her. 
They finally catch up to them at a nearby gorge where the woodsman has Jessica trapped on a rickety wooden bridge. When the gang catch up, he cuts one of the supporting lines and runs off. Scooby and Shaggy dive down to save Jessica and all three manage to land on a small cliff before the bridge gives way. When they return to the camp, they find the place trashed and the kids who have apparently slept through all of that. <laughs> I'm impressed! The next day, Jessica takes the gang and the kids back to Camp Big Moose and outlines what had been stolen. About a week ago, we noticed that some sonar equipment had gone missing from the Marine Biology Center. A few days later, an RV disappeared from the Motorsports Pavilion. Velma uses her GPS to try to ping the GPS in the stolen RV. They get a hit coming from Shadow Canyon, which prompts our third monster origin story. They say that place is haunted by the ghost of a lost hiker, still searching for her way out. They call her the Spectre of Shadow Canyon. Legend has it, if you hear her terrifying wail, you're a goner. Daphne points out that the stolen sonar equipment is useless outside of the lake, and Fred does what Fred do. I guess we better split up and look for clues. He, Jessica, Luke, and thanks to yet another installment of the on-again, off-again romance, Daphne head off to check out the lake. Velma volunteers the rest of the group to go to Shadow Canyon, but Shaggy and Scooby opt out, choosing to spend time in Big Moose's five-star dining hall. They take Deacon with them, leaving Velma, Bert, and Trudy to check out the canyon. Underwater, Luke takes the lead and the rest of the group follow, not realizing that the fishman is lurking in the weeds below. On their way to the canyon, Velma's GPS loses the RV's signal. While she and Bert argue, Trudy leaves the Jeep to follow a squirrel and finds some odd tire tracks through the field of flowers they're currently stopped in. She points them out and the team start following them. Back at the lake, the group spots the same church and realizes there's not just the church, but an entire town under the lake. But the fishman attacks before they can get too close. While Fred and Daphne fend it off, Luke and Jessica find a small tunnel in a nearby rock. The fishman captures Fred, but Daphne uses her scuba tank to slow it down and the group escapes into the tunnel. They emerge in a cave and follow it to see where it leads. Back at the dining hall, Scooby, Shaggy, and Deacon are chased out via food fight when Daryl calls them out for not being Camp Big Moose attendees. They wind up on a runaway Segway in Shadow Canyon. Speaking of, Velma, Trudy, and Bert find the missing RV thanks to the boys showing up and colliding with it. Ingenious! Someone painted the RV to look exactly like the canyon wall. Inside, they find the missing sonar equipment and discover whoever stole the RV is using it to scan the bottom of the lake. Back in the cave, Luke finds a crate of what he thinks are candles, but is, of course, dynamite. And there's other crates as well. And there's a lot of it. What would someone need all that dynamite for? Daylight! That explosion just gave us a way out! And I think it's about time for our third monster to show up. <laughs> It's the Spectre of Shadow Canyon! A chase breaks out when it comes to an end when Velma manages to knock a stone pillar onto the Spectre. That night, the gang reconvenes and they put together what they've learned. Luke and Trudy say they're in to help solve the mystery. Deacon, however, has had enough. You're all nuts! You hear me? Nuts! Feeling like they're still missing something important, the gang go back to the camp store, where the owner fills in some details about the town under the lake. Moose Creek was home to a notorious gangster. Westlake's Drowned Hopes. The gang return to the dam where Daphne finds information that before LaRue died, he told his cellmate, Babyface Beretti, how to find his loot. When dawn breaks on the summer solstice, the steeple will point the way. Two months earlier, Babyface Beretti broke out of prison, but looking at the picture in the paper, he's too short to be either the woodsman or the fishman, which means he has an accomplice. As for the dynamite, that's really simple. In order to get at the town, the dam will be blown, which will send the water of Big Moose Lake flooding down and wiping out Camp Little Moose. All of my beloved childhood memories will be underwater. Nostalgia juice, making your childhood more important than it was. Since the summer solstice is that day, the gang realize they need to get Luke and Trudy out of the camp before the dam gets destroyed. However, returning to the camp, they find that the woodsman's been busy. Fortunately, Bert, Luke, and Trudy manage to hide from him. Which leads Velma to a grim realization. If the camp is empty, then he thinks it's okay to... Everybody piles into the van and peels out, barely staying ahead of the rushing water. Fred, if you're back here, 
Then who's driving? Scooby's alleged driving manages to get the van onto a pair of canoes which floated along the crest of the wave until it crashes up what I assume is the original bank of Little Moose Lake. The town is revealed and the gang head out to investigate. They hear someone coming and it turns out to be Jessica. After the dam blew, I saw Deacon heading this way, so I followed him. It's at this point that the woodsman shows up and starts chasing the gang, who separate. As Shaggy, Scooby, Daphne, Velma, Trudy, and Bert run, Deacon appears in one of the doorways and urges them inside. It turns out to be the jail, and Deacon locks them in one of the cells. Why? It's Babyface Beretti. Huh? I admit. I did not see that coming. We did, Velma. Meanwhile, Fred, Luke, and Jessica get chased by the woodsman into the church and up the steeple. The sun begins to rise, and Babyface heads out to locate the treasure. The woodsman breaks into the steeple, and he and Fred tussle, but Luke manages to use the bell to knock him out of the church. He grabs Jessica as he falls, but Fred grabs her, and when her shoe slips off, the woodsman splats into the mud. Back at the jail, after a full five minutes of incarceration, Shaggy goes stir-crazy. The gang reunite, but the woodsman has vanished. The sun comes up, and sure enough, the steeple sends the sunlight to the spot where LaRue's treasure is supposedly stashed. Scooby digs it up, but no sooner do they retrieve the trunk and open it, the fish man shows up. Fortunately, Scooby puts his newfound driving skills to good use. Which, of course, leads to the reveal. The woodsman? Ranger Knutson? Of course, there's still one loose end. Get this off of me! So, Babyface and Knutsman used the Fishman costume and the sonar to find the location of the town. The Woodsman was used to scare off anyone from Camp Little Moose so they could blow the dam. When the gang found the stolen RV, they brought the Spectre to life using zip lines to make it look like she could fly. So, with everything wrapped up, Fred makes a decision. This thing between you and me, it, it could never work. You're Big Moose, I'm Little Moose. We're, we're just too different. I'm sorry. I was just going to say thanks again for saving my life. Oh, oh, that thing. Sure, but uh, you're welcome. Bert laments that now both camps are screwed. He's got a lake with no camp, and Jessica has a camp with no lake. But a suggestion from Scooby saves the day. However, following the credits, it may be that not everything at Camp Little Big Moose was just a story. <laughs> Camp Scare is, quite honestly, one of the best Scooby-Doo movies to come out since the Zombie Island era. It's genuinely scary in parts and has some of the best gags and best mystery elements in all of these movies. The gimmick of having three different monsters is effective and doesn't overwhelm the plot. The kids, Bert and Jessica, are welcome additions to the gang without upstaging them. Everything is firing beautifully here, and if you've never seen this one, watch it immediately. This video should be up on Halloween, and there's plenty here to fit the mood. And so, it's time to bunk down with another of the 30-plus films of Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Dooby! <laughs> Everyone